I call my homebrew satellite station controller the Sat Helper. I've tried other names and I'm not keen on the current working name, but it will have to do for now. The top display is a touchscreen that is used for all user input and particularly it is used to select a satellite from the list of satellites of interest. The screen you see is the info screen for a pass in progress. Doppler frequency correction can be enabled or disabled for direct tuning using the transmitter or receiver VFOs. In practice Doppler correction is always enabled during a pass. There is another way to adjust transmit or receive frequency independently, and I will explain that later. SAT Helper synchronizes adjustment of transmit and receive frequencies using one tuning knob. For example, MESAT-1, the University of Maine's amateur radio satellite, is an inverting linear bird, as they're called. As transmit frequency increases, that is clockwise knob rotation, receive frequency decreases. The two-line LCD display shows uncorrected frequencies. In other words, it shows frequencies before Doppler correction. Whereas the transmitter and receiver display actual Doppler corrected frequencies. The small OLED on the front panel has a crude diagram of the sky in normal orientation that is north up and east right. Although my station is located near a back window facing south, which can be a little confusing, the OLED also shows azimuth and elevation numerically. The latter is of particular interest to me because the antenna has only azimuth rotation and I cannot reach the satellite when it is significantly above or below the fixed 30 degree elevation of the antenna. I should say antennas, plural, because transmit and receive are different bands and the receiver is not disabled during transmit. The same microcontroller that drives the front OLED display, an ESP8266, also supports the Wi-Fi interface for downloading TLEs over the internet and for syncing SAT helpers clock with an NTP server. The small blue box that is separate from SAT Helper is the antenna infrared interface. It converts azimuths to codes that the RCA controller box understands. There is a small IR transmitter on the right side that points towards the RCA box. It could be across the room and would still work. In fact, the serial to IR circuit could be part of the main controller enclosure except that in the development sequence it was an afterthought. A few items on the desk don't belong to the satellite station. The desk microphone goes with the IC7300, which is an HF and 6 meters transceiver. The larger of the two circuit boards is a USB to CIV serial converter that goes with the IC7300. It has nothing to do with the satellite station. On the other hand, the small circuit board has a pair of SPST buttons that duplicate soft touch buttons from SAT Helper's tools menu. These buttons allow adding or subtracting a delta. I think it's 50 hertz. In any case, it is configurable. They adjust either the transmit or receive frequency without affecting the other or Doppler correction. It was one of those ideas that have no merit. In other words, it doesn't get used. The round multi-port headphone splitter is part of the CIV bus, and that is just because it can be. On the back of SAT Helper are dedicated serial and CIV ports for receive, the FT991A, and transmit, the IC7100, and a serial wire to the rotator interface. SAT Helper does not use Hamlib or any computer-based resource so its interface currently lacks generality. 
I made it for myself, basically because I was curious to learn something about how orbit prediction and Doppler correction and so forth work, rather than to rely on the excellent work of other hams who have written computer interfaces for satellite tracking. However, SatHelper's interface code would be easily generalized for commanding other transmitters or receivers or transceivers. There is a great deal more to explain, but best to leave that for the write-up. The details can be found at the link that is shown. Thank you for viewing.